How do ions combine to form ionic compounds? Well, they have to have an equal amount of charge, which means that the positive has to equal the negative in order to form a compound. So overall, the charge is zero. So for our example with sodium and chloride, sodium becomes a positive one because it loses an electron. Chlorine becomes a negative one because it gains the electron from the sodium. Because there is a plus one charge on the sodium and a minus one charge on the chlorine, overall, the charge is going to be zero, which forms our sodium chloride. There's a couple different ways that we can match the charges to make our new compound. You can think of it like Legos, where the more charge there is, the bigger the Lego block. And so if sodium has a plus one and chlorine has a minus one, they're going to match up together. If we look at magnesium, which is a plus two, and chloride, which is a minus one, it's going to take two of the chloride to make the charge balance with the magnesium. So it would be magnesium, one magnesium for two chloride. If we look at lithium, lithium is a plus one. If we combine it with oxygen, which is a minus two, it's going to take two lithiums to balance the charge of the oxygen. And if we look at magnesium and oxygen, magnesium is a plus two, oxygen is a minus two, and their charge is balanced, so we just need one of each. There is another method that can be used where we take the charge on the ion and make it the subscript for the other. And the reason that this works is because if we take three calcium, which are each a plus two, we get a plus six charge. And if we take two phosphorus, which are each a negative three charge, we get a minus six charge, and we end up with zero. Now, if we look at our example of magnesium and oxygen, then we would get Mg2O2. Now, ionic compounds are always in the lowest reduced form. So this method still works. We just need to take another step and divide each of those subscripts by two in order to get our correct formula of MgO. So you just need to be a little bit more careful and reduce anything if you decide to do the cross multiply method. Again, you can just reduce it if the cross multiply method does not work. So here's some practice. Write the formula that you would form between the following elements once they become ions. Based on its position on the periodic table, lithium would become a positive one charge. Fluoride would be a negative one charge. We would just need one of each to make lithium fluoride. Another way that you can think about it is with our valence electrons. Lithium has one valence electron. Fluoride has seven. And so this extra electron will be transferred to the fluoride. If we look at potassium and sulfide, so potassium is a plus one. The sulfide is a minus two. And so our formula would be K2S. We take two potassiums to balance the charge of the sulfide. If we look at calcium, calcium's a plus two, 
chlorides a minus one. You can draw the charge. So it's going to take two chlorides to balance the charge with the calcium. So our formula would be CaCl2. You're welcome to use whichever method works best for you. We take strontium, this is SR, the 2 plus, and phosphorus, which is a 3 minus. Our formula would be SR3, C2. When we talk about transition metals, transition metals also form cations because they are metals. But the pattern is not quite as simple as with the columns that they fall in. And some of them form multiple charges. So we do have to have a little bit more information in order to figure out the charges. And you do not have to memorize these. Let's practice writing the ionic formulas for compounds containing transition metals. You can use the table provided or the Roman numerals that follow the element that tell you its charge. Those Roman numerals are in parentheses. Pause the video. Try to form the compound. Let's look at chromium. So chromium, the plus 3 charge, chloride based on its position on the periodic table, is a minus 1. It's going to take 3 chlorides to balance the charge of the chromium. So we would get CrCl3. If we look at iron 2 and nitrogen, so the parentheses tell us that it's a plus 2 charge on the iron. Nitrogen position tells us it's a minus 3. And so our formula would be Fe3N2. This cannot be reduced any further. And so this method of the cross multiplying works. We look at nickel. Nickel has a charge of plus 2. Our oxygen has a charge of minus 2. We do cross multiplying. We get Ni2O2. Now this needs to be reduced because they are both 2. We divide each of those subscripts by 2. And we get our formula of NiO. Copper, the Roman numeral tells us that it has a charge of plus 1, because copper can actually form multiple charges, plus 1 or plus 2. Our bromine is a minus 1. We just need one of each to balance the charge. So we would have CuCr. We do have cases where we have polyatomic ions. Polyatomic is where we have multiple atoms that come together as a group that have the charge. These are always the same name and charge and grouping of the polyatomic ions. You will always have a table available for you to use whenever you need it. So there is no need to memorize these polyatomic ions. You will notice that there are some patterns here. So NO3 is nitrate. If we reduce the oxygen by 1, the beginning of the name is the same, but the ending changes. So instead of nitrate, it becomes nitrite with an I-T-E because there's one less oxygen. OH minus is always hydroxide, and we'll see that uh, polyatomic ion quite frequently. Chlorate is ClO3 with a minus, ends in ATE. If we 
reduce the oxygen by one, becomes chlorite. Sulfate, SO4 2 minus. Sulfite, SO3 2 minus. Carbonate, CO3 2 minus. And the only positive one that we have is ammonium, NH4 plus. So when we're writing the formula of polyatomic ions, it is very similar to what we've done before. We still have the same goals of wanting to balance the charges. And we might need more than one polyatomic ion. If we do, then we need to include parentheses and put a number outside of that parentheses. So let's look at an example. So here we're going to write the formulas for these different compounds. So calcium is Ba2 plus, nitrate is NO3 minus. It is going to take two nitrates to combine with the positive calcium. And so the formula that we're going to get because we have multiple polyatomic ions, we need to include parentheses. And that 2 goes on the outside of the parentheses. Pause the video and determine the formulas for the problem and compound. Potassium is a plus 1 charge. Sulfate is a minus 2 charge. So in this case, it's going to take 2 potassium to balance the charge of the sulfate. Because there's only one sulfate, no parentheses are required. Beryllium is a plus 2. Phosphite, CO3, with a negative 3 charge. Phosphite. So our formula for beryllium phosphite is Be3, we need parentheses, CO4, close our parentheses with a 2 on the outside. We look at ammonium, ammonium is NH4 plus, chloride is Cl minus, so we just need one ammonium. NH4 Cl. Cobalt hydroxide. So cobalt is a transition metal. It's got a plus two charge. Hydroxide has a minus one charge. And so we will need parentheses. Cl OH2. And the parentheses are important to show that we have both two oxygen and two hydrogen.